A warm welcome everybody to the Celtic Forever podcast. We're going to do the big preview of Atalanta against Celtic and some other stuff, news and other things that are happening around about Celtic. We're going to just go through everything. Uh, just a quick one today, quick preview. We've got John, let's bring him in. Um, all the attention sort of came off Celtic, John, the last couple of days with the Rangers result. And to, but all the attention is uh, going to go right back onto Celtic with a big game on Wednesday night against Atalanta, isn't it? So uh, we're going to be back in the spotlight with this one. I back in the spotlight. I, look, I, I don't look forward to these games in the, in the Champions League, the away from home games. That's uh, it's a big concern, isn't it? Yeah, look, all we're hoping for here is avoiding an, an absolute thumping and committee there with a kind of just a respectful result. That's all we can hope for. Just keep it respectful. Don't uh, don't give this Atalanta team uh, the chance to walk over the top of Xander. But uh, d- it depends who's starting. Is Carl Vickers going to start? I don't know. We'll get into that. Yeah, what we'll, we'll do is we'll get into it right now, John, because the you know there's a video circulating of Cameron Carl Vickers training, but there was also videos before the Aberdeen game of Cameron Carl Vickers training, John. So. I don't think that goes for anything, really. I still think he's going to be a doubt for this one, to be honest with you, John. Um, but there is videos out there of him running about training, so he can't be too far away. Greg Taylor, on the other hand, he's definitely missing for this one. So um, it looks like we're going to be starting with Alex Valley again against Atalanta, John. Um, but what's your thoughts on Vickers, John? Do you think there's a chance he could start this one? Well, considering... He wasn't even on the bench against Aberdeen. That's to me that's concerning that he wasn't even on the bench. So that's a red flag right there, if ever there was one. Mm. Yeah, we need the strongest defence possible, especially against an inform Atalanta. We're gonna go into Atalanta's stats and stuff like that, John, like we did Brusher Dortmund, I'm afraid. Um, because we want to know what we're up against it, so we're gonna we're gonna go through that. Bit by bit. But let's continue with Celtic for the pain. Forum's no great, John. A loss, a win, and a draw going into this one. So, sort of a up and down, but mainly down into it with the loss and the draw against Aberdeen and a, and a struggle against Ross County. So, you know, can we can we change the and mix things up, John, against Atalanta and come out of there with that at least a respectable result? You know, a draw would be a great result for me. And, you know, I know there's Celtic supporters out there that say, no, no, one, it's got to be the one, one, one. But you've got to be realistic. You've got to be, you got to look at, you know, the form of the team for a start, the form that we're on and the form that Atalanta are on. The fact that, that we're away from home as well. We never won in Italy until we beat Lazio a few years ago, John. So we've never actually won on Italian soil. So um, New Lennon's team went to Lazio, obviously, and we turned them over. Um, so that ended that. But, John, can we do that again? Can we do a Lazio and come away with uh, at least a draw? Or pos- possibly a win against that Atlanta? Is that possible at all? Anything's possible. Of course it is. Of course it's possible. But I, I don't know. When it comes to Celtic in the Champions League away from home, it's, it's never, you know, good news. And anybody... Celtic fans that think uh, we can just go over there and wonder they're holding themselves because it's Celtic we're talking about in the Champions League where their bottle tends to crash 99% of the time away from home. Uh, so you've got to be realistic. You've really got to be realistic here and say we're up against it. Like, first and foremost, we're up against it. And of course, there's also the other side of the coin where anything is possible in the game of football and Celtic could go out there and possibly get a draw, Xander, or sneak a win. You just don't know. It's 11 men against 11. It just depends on the attitude of the players, but you've got to always be realistic and look at the history. And it's no uh, great reading, to be honest with you. And I'm sure every Celtic fan knows that. Yeah, obviously, I've, I think everybody, every Celtic supporter is, you know, nervous about this one because we haven't been Bruce Dortmund. It's a night that we never turned up. Not one player turned up that night. And what we're looking for is a reaction, John. We're looking for players to turn up for a start, you know, put in a fighting performance, you know. Uh, the form's got to go out the window with this game on Wednesday night, John. It's, it's got to go right out the window and 
put in a, the team's got to put in a performance uh, world class players, John, because let, let's touch on Atalanta, John, because you know it's, I know we're here to talk about Celtic, but we're allowed to talk about who we're playing against, right? So we're going to go through Atalanta in a wee bit of detail here. Um, so obviously we've played the stadium and it's a capacity of twenty five thousand, John. So it's not exactly intimidating twenty five thousand. It's not a sixty, seventy or eighty thousand. Uh, like Barcelona, Real Madrid, John, or Man U, whatever, John, it's uh, 25,000 for capacity. Uh, but it is a wee tight, compact stadium, as you can see on your screen there. Aye, I was looking at that there when you were talking, actually. I was looking at that uh, stadium. It reminded me of Pitodri a wee bit. No, mm. no the stand behind the goals. That doesn't look like Pitodri, but the stand with the roof, I'm sure you're looking at the same picture. The stand with the yeah. roof, and then you've got a bit you can see the yellow stairs there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That wee bit there, from that stand with the roof to the wee stairs reminds me of Pitodri. But never mind. Beautiful scenery there, is Ander. It looks nice, doesn't it? It looks relaxing. <laughs> so, and the surface looks okay. I don't know when that picture was took, but it does look quite nice, doesn't it? So, um, let's go into their form here, John. They've won the last three games. Um, but the form is up and down, John. They're, I mean, they're no, they're no unbeaten or anything like that in the league. So they do come into this on forum, John. Celtic is a win, a loss, and a draw, and they've won the last three. So um, we knew we were up against it anyway, John. So that that doesn't really surprise us in any way at all, does it? No, no. And of course, they won the Europa League last season, beaten by a, by a Leverkusen three nothing. So that's the kind of team. The kind of class that we're up against here. This Atalanta team are a quality side. And Celtic are going to have to be very, very aware of that. And no leave there with another humiliating defeat. Because this is a top quality team, Xander. Let's no kid ourselves here. Just look at their stats. It tells you that it's no mugs that beat Bayern Leverkusen 3 nothing in the Europa League final. All right, Rangers got to the Europa League final a few years ago. They never won it, of course, but... But they've just yeah. turned over by a Leverkusen three nothing in a Europa League final. So that's the kind of quality we're up against. Yeah, they're, they're sitting eighth in the Italian league just now, John, with uh, four defeats. Actually, four defeats, three wins. Obviously, they're, they're now in for them because they've won the, the last few games and a draw, John. So they, they are they are now in for them. But at the start, you know, it wasn't a great. Let's run through some of the. the the results that stand sorry that stood out for me for them this season. Shakhtar they beat three nothing. That's no easy thing to do. Genoa they beat one. They had a good result there. They also drew with Arsenal and London, John. So that's that's no that's not an easy thing to do, is it? To draw with Arsenal, uh, they drew nothing each there. Uh, but some of the sort of worst results, John, a four 0 loss to Inter Milan. Um, so they have they have got goals, you know, they are conceding goals as well. Um, a 2-1 loss to Torino, um, 3-2 loss to Como, uh, Perry Como, as you said the last time. <laughs> so, John, they've, they've got goals um, against them and their team, John. They are conceding goals, um, um, but they're also uh, scoring goals as well, John. So, you know, hopefully we can um, hopefully we can break that defence down once or twice on Wednesday night. Yeah. Uh, uh. I look, we all hope for that. Every Celtic fan hopes that that happens. Are we going to turn them over? Right now, looking at the stats of the teams and what we're up against, it's highly unlikely that Celtic will turn them over. I'm not saying it won't happen because anything's possible, but it possibly could happen. I just get into these Champions, Champions League games away from home with fear. Every time we play away in the Champions League, it's always filled with fear. So that's just my take on it right now, Xander. It's, it's always fearful going away in the Champions League for Celtic. Uh, and this game is absolutely no different to that, especially with a team like Atalanta that just won the Europa League. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. It's, um, you know, you just want it to be respectable, don't you, John? That's the bottom line. Uh, it's a 5.45 kickoff, by the way, folks, on Wednesday. The game's on TNT Sports. There's also on Discovery, which I thought was uh, Discovery Plus, which I thought was a bit strange. Uh, uh, let's have a look at some of the players' ones to watch, John, right? Um, uh, the, I mean, they're the littered with superstars, really, John. Um, 
Uh, Adam Ola, look him in, John. He's a centre forward, £40 million. Pound. They cost him. Um, Rituji, you know, 13 goals in 15 games, John. Rituji, £30 million they cost. Quadrado, um, the wee winger. Obviously, obviously, we know him from playing in England, Quadrado. Um, <laughs> I mean, look at this. Kalasevic, a centre back. Sulemana, central midfielder. Central midfielder. I get nervous at the thought of these names. Palacelic, central midfielder, 13 million. Zappa Costa, central midfielder. Vlaovic, Ed, Zanolo. Uh, John, it's just a little bit of talent, isn't it, really? Aye, but we have got uh, Alex Valley. <laughs> you know, John, we Alex Valley. I think he's, I think he's going to be a player for us, to be honest with you. Uh, I know what you're saying, but we aren't renowned with class superstars of we just don't have the money for that like these teams at Atalanta uh, the Italian teams things like that John but you know we do have Kyogo we do have Maeda hopefully he's on for him um, and, and let's go through the Celtic squad then John because a lot of our boys have been off it for, for the last three games anyway um, before that we were flying with me so let's let's look at some of the boys that have been off it and can they turn it around against Atalanta Dyson we'll start with him right away he was non-existent Against Aberdeen, everybody's allowed one game. Um, and everybody's allowed an off game, John. But we need Dyson to be ret- to return to his very best on Wednesday night. Dyson is one of these guys that show up for the big games, which kind of surprised me that he failed to show up for the, the Aberdeen game. I mean, he was absolutely terrible against Aberdeen, Dyson. But uh, he's got to uh, put in a big appearance. Big I, I think he does in the Champions League. I think he usually. When we play in the Champions League, Dyson's one of the players that always shows up. Um, so I think we'll be okay with, him, with Dyson. I think he'll be okay. Do you think that the Aberdeen thing, John, was anything to do with the the international games, John? You know, all that travelling, having to come back, play Aberdeen. And we know he's done it before. He did look very, very leggy on, on Saturday, didn't he, against Aberdeen? He was non-existent against Aberdeen. He did absolutely nothing. I marked him up at 3 out of 10. He's lucky to get that. He did absolutely nothing. And he should have been took half the first half, to be honest with you. Or at least at half time, he should have been just, look, you're not going back out for the second half, you're doing nothing. But, uh, look, he's a great player, Dyson Maeda. And he, does, he shows up for the big games. Maybe the travelling he was doing, maybe that affected him. Uh, maybe just was they feeling good in himself on Saturday? We don't know, but I think he'll be okay for the Atalanta game. Dyson will know himself that he, he was terrible on Saturday. He'll know that. Um, but when it comes to the Champions League, he tends to show up and he always puts in a great performance. No, no, sm- He was the only player that stood out for me against uh, Dortmund, by the way. He was our man of the match for Celtic against Dortmund, didn't he? Uh, so we're looking for that again. Um, we need every player to turn up on Wednesday night, John. Uh, just like we needed every player to turn up on Saturday against Aberdeen, and that never quite happened. It did for the first half, but, but the second half, some players were posted missing, thinking the job was already done. That's, that's what I think happened on Saturday. Uh, let's cross over to the other side. Nicholas Kuhn. Another player that never quite did it on Saturday. He wasn't quite as bad as Dyson, to be honest with you. We know these players are allowed one bad game, John, but it just kind of continue. Um, we said on the preview the Aberdeen that we wanted both Dyson Maida and Nicholas Kuhn to run Aberdeen ragged, and it just it just never worked out like that, did it, for both our wingers? No, far from it. Both of them were poor performers on the day. Nicholas Kuhn tried his best. I don't know if he was maybe... Look, I blame it on these international breaks. It totally stops the flow of the game. And then you're having to go and play Champions League games as well when you're no up to speed. But that Atalanta team, they'll be the same, you know. They've, they're coming back. I'm sure a lot of their players, most of them, are international players. So I'm sure they were all playing international games as well, but... I think they won their game at the weekend, I Atalanta, uh, unlike us, a uh, very tough game for Celtic. It was a top-of-the-table clash. It was always going to be a tough game anyway, but uh, 
quick. You need all your players showing up. Even against Aberdeen, you need all your players showing up. And uh, that never happened on Saturday, but now, now is the time to maybe try and put that right. Yeah, it's no better time, is there? A Champions League, it's the big stage. Um, Atalanta won 2 0 at the weekend away from home, John, so that was a decent result for them. Uh, and obviously, they've got that one day less rest as well, John. They played on Sunday, Sunday night, actually. So, you know, they've, they've not had much, you know, turnover time, John. So they've gone from Sunday night into to when, 12, well, Wednesday afternoon into sort of a five o'clock. So uh, it's a very short uh, turnaround for, for Atalanta. So, um, no excuses for them, I suppose. They'll just go out there and do do what they've got to do, John. And um, um, but that one day rest it might help us. Hopefully, it does help us. Um, that's it's, we need all the help we can get. <laughs> so, so um, let's move to our thoughts to the defence, John. Big trusty at the William Scales. We need these boys to to click for this one, don't we? Still no sold on trusty at all. Um... No playing in the right centre-back. I keep saying, it. I've, say, I've said it for the first time I've seen him, that guy should not be playing at right centre-back because he's not got a right foot at all. He can't, he's, he can't use it. He'd be as well just yeah. tying it up behind his leg because he can't use his right foot at all. Um, so that's just a wasted talent playing in the wrong position there. I'm sure if he played at left centre-back, he'd be fine. But on the right, He's going to get exposed. It's not his side. Uh, I'm no sold on that, him playing in that position. We really need a proper right centre-back playing there. And that's Carter Vickers, obviously, who I don't think is going to start. I just can't see it. No, John, I can't see it, to be honest. I hope I'm totally wrong. But, but I mean, even if it does start, is it 100% fit? That's another question, isn't it? But John, I was—I don't normally listen to the Clyde one phone in, right? But I listened to ten minutes at last night because of the the Rangers result, you know, them getting beat and Celtic extending the the lead at the top of the league. Just to hear some opinions on it. And the first call I heard was another call call up Slayton Scales, you know, wanting Trusty playing at the left centre back and uh, Carter Vickers in the right centre back. You know, right as soon as I heard that. Right back off again. Uh, there's still Celtic supporters out there, John, giving Skills a hard time. I mean, Skills are one of the best players in the team on, on Saturday afternoon against Aberdeen. He's one of the best players every single week. Liam Skills. He got exposed for the second goal. Now, I'm not going to deny that. When I say he got exposed, he got exposed for pace only. Now, it's not his fault. He's not the fastest centre-back in the world. But what he lacks in speed, he makes up for in bravery, winning challenges, constantly winning challenges, putting in tackles. He's good at getting forward and picking a pass, setting up attacks. He's the perfect centre back. If he had, if he had more pace, he's the perfect centre back. And me personally, I rate him. He's right up there with the top players at Celtic. And for Celtic players, the Celtic fans, sorry, he still be getting on his case. No many granted. I've heard most Celtic fans are happy with Liam Scales. They love big Liam. I'd say probably that number's risen to about maybe 90% of Celtic fans love Liam Scales. Uh, for anybody that looks at that and thinks he's no use, go and support another team. That's my answer to them. Uh, John, he's, as you say, we, we give him man of the match. You know, mo not every game, but a lot of the times we give him man of the match. He's, he's an outstanding defender, William Scales. He's brilliant. As you say, he's a brave line. He wins 99% of his tackles, his air duels as well in the air. You know, his passing ability from the back is superb as well. I don't know what it is. As you say, John, just a few a few Celtic supporters. I mean, as soon as, as, soon as I switched on the radio Sunday morning about Scales, I couldn't believe, couldn't believe it. You know, so... Uh, I don't know what it, what it is. Uh, the what the want. What, what more can you want out of William Skills, John? You know he's uh he's he's also had a you know a partnership that is not you know that he hasn't used to having trusty in beside him for the last few games. You know used to that. So he's missing his big partner as well, Cam Cam Carter Vickers, but he's still playing really well. So I don't understand that. I don't understand the criticism. To be honest with you, John. Um, uh, okay, other areas of the park that we need to slightly improve on, John. Obviously, uh, the midfield played really well, I think, on Saturday in the first half, but fell away in the second. 
So I think all we're looking for from the midfield, no matter who it is that gets picked, is a full 90 minutes. Aye. Aye, exactly. Full 90 minutes is all we're looking for. Just go to keep pushing and pushing for that full game. These are professional football players that get paid very, very handsome wages to play for Celtic. So, look, we realise that they're probably up against better players. But it's no different to Celtic going to well, Aberdeen coming to Celtic and putting up a fight. Celtic should be expected with the golf and class and players to turn over Aberdeen 5 6 nothing, but they don't. Aberdeen come to Celtic Park, perform, put on a show, get a draw. Probably unlucky not to win the game with a, a goal that was chopped half, but uh, all right, it was correctly chopped half, but that doesn't matter. They came for 2 0 behind and fought and battled for everything to get themselves back into the game. So, what's to say Celtic can they go to Atalanta and do that? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think what in everybody's mind is the Dortmund game, John. But, you know, Atlanta are no Dortmund. It's a different game. It's a different team. It's a different country. You know, and in these back-to-back away games in the Champions League as well, John, you know, it's it's going kind to of get any harder, kids. So, yeah, I think we'll see a difference. I think we'll see a different Celtic on Wednesday night. I think we'll see a battle in Celtic. I think we'll, we'll see a, a, a 90 minutes of Celtic, John. I think we'll see a full 90 minutes of uh, Celtic, you know, Trying the hard, I know they always try the hardest, but I think you'll see a 90 minutes of Celtic, you know, pushing, harrying, shutting down, closing down, defending, you know, and uh, and hopefully with all that put in place, John, we can come up with uh, Atalanta with a respectable scoreline and hopefully some sort of a result as well. Aye, though that's all I'm looking for a respectable scoreline. If we get beat, I'd rather it was something like 2 1, something like that, a close game. That's all you're looking for. You're not wanting to go to these places and get turned over five, six goals. Uh, it's Champions League syndrome with Celtic. They hear that anthem and they get the fear. Um, and I guarantee the players at Atalanta, they're not that much better than Celtic players. They're no, uh, like I say, I can use a, a comparison, Aberdeen coming to Celtic Park. Celtic players are supposed to be a lot better than Aberdeen players, judging by the money that they spend on them. But it never works out that way, Xander. Celtic, they have better players, but that doesn't mean, you know, they're not capable of going to a place like Atalanta, who have got better players and getting a result out of them. Celtic should go to Atalanta and do what Aberdeen done to Celtic. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, and it's possible, John, because let's have a wee quick look at the odds. You know, you look at Aberdeen, at Celtic Park the other day, it was six to one the draw. For the Atalanta game, it's four to one the draw. And when I mean, you look at the odds for the Aberdeen game at the weekend, it was ten to one Aberdeen to get them. It's six to one Celtic to get the win in Atalanta. And then you look at the, uh, the Atalanta, they're one to two. Celtic were one to four. So there's a chance, John. There's definitely a chance. The bookmakers even think there's a okay, albeit it's slight. But they do think there's a chance that Celtic getting something in the in the John, going by the bookmakers. Aye, but there is every chance if Celtic don't bottle it. And this is the thing, these Atalanta players are no that much better players than Celtic. Look, I don't know the Atalanta team, but apparently, according to you, the money that they're spent on their players is a lot more than what Celtic spent on their players. But I guarantee you, man for man, they're no that much better a player. How good a football player can you actually be? that it's physically human to be good. I know that much better, Xander. It's just the living guys against the living guys. Some guys on the Atalanta team have got a reputation as being great players. Some guys in the Celtic team have got a reputation for being good players. So there isn't that much difference between football players when it comes to talent, Xander, at that level. I mean, there's not that much difference. You know what I mean? I, I just don't. I just don't think Atalanta should be turning Celtic over five six nothing. If that does happen, there's something horribly wrong there. Yeah, I, I think it's, I think you're right. Actually, you know, John. But um, I think it's a lot. Of, as you said earlier, bottle. It's all down to bottle as well. You know, away from home, especially. Uh, but we seem to struggle big time, didn't we? So I mean, how good would it be if we went to Atalanta and won the game? You know, away and away win and Italy in the Champions League because the last show game was UEFA Cup so um, that that would be you know 
that was just uh, that'd be amazing if that was to happen. Um, so as you say, John, you never know. We just need to keep my fingers crossed. Hope for the best. Uh, hopefully, they all turn up as well. Um, and I think they will, John. I think you know. I think the players know themselves. You know, they've not done it in the last two or three games. Um, so they'll be wanting to put that right, I suppose. Um, all right, John, let, let's move on. Um, and in fact, before we move on, I wanted to have a wee word on Kyogo. He was back on form on Saturday with his assist and his goal, and I never stopped running as well. So that was good to see we Kyogo back in form. Uh, so it's 10 to 1 Kyogo to score in the game, John, um, against Anf- Atalanta. Um, and it's 14 to 1 for Kuhn. The reason why I'm saying this is because. I'm looking at Atalanta's, you know, strikers to score the first goal. They're placed at 92. Lickman and Rutuji, John, both 92 to score the first goal as, a, as um, you know, their top favourites, obviously, to score the first goal at 92. And Kyogo and Kuhn are 10 and 14 to 1. So um, it, it's very similar to the Aberdeen game, John. It's very similar, only roles reversed. You know, Atalanta have got similar sort of a odds a Celtic, you know, at home, and uh, Celtic have got similar odds to Aberdeen, if you know what I mean, Celtic being the away team. So, um, looking at that, John, I think I think there is a chance, you know, I think I think the bookmakers are giving us a slight chance. They're giving us a bit of chance than what they gave Aberdeen to Celtic Park, let's put it that way. Aye, well, we don't know what the score's going to be, but just but all we're hoping for is Celtic don't bottle it. Uh, guys like Nicholas Coon and all that, 14 to 1 to score. All that stuff goes out the window when that whistle blows, Sander. When that whistle uh, blows for the start of the game, it's can you keep your bottle? That's where it all comes down to. Can you keep your bottle and show what you're capable of doing? No looking at these other players and admire, admiring them. You've got to get stuck in and you've got to get the best out of the guys you're playing against. That's all it comes down to. It's not that they're far superior players. It's just a case of can you keep your bottle? And if Celtic can keep their bottle, there's every chance they can leave there with a result. But it all comes down to the bottle. For me, that's what it comes down to in the Champions League. Are yeah. you going to uh, have the, the small man inferior syndrome? Because you play in Scotland, you're playing against a team in Italy that won the Europa League. Or just the living guys. Go with your living guys and show you show the fans with your living guys what your team can do. That's what it should be about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what about the manager, John Brendan? Um, he said after the Dortmund game, he wasn't going to change it. He's going to keep it the same way. We, know, we all remember him saying that. Will they change it, John? Will there be a change in tactics? Or do you think there'll be a change in formation? Or do you think there'll be, he'll just send them out the exact same way he did against Dortmund? Would you, what's your personal thoughts? I know we're no mind readers. We don't know what the manager's going to do. But he did say he wasn't going to change it, John. So what, what do you think? I think it stinks at arrogance if he sends his team out to play the same way they did against Dortmund. It's utter arrogance. You've got to change something in the Champions League. And what has got to change is this passing it out at the back and try to build for the back like that. You've got to get the ball up the park when you're in times of pressure. You've got to get it up the park to give Celtic a chance to get out and close them down in their half. You can't just keep passing out for the back, get closed down fast, concede goals. Before you know it, you're 5 nothing done. Uh, so you've got to change that approach, I think. Get the players up in the park, look for knock-ons and play in their half of the park rather than passing it about the back and getting exposed because that's just absolute folly if they do that. Surely he's not going to do that twice. And if he does, then... Uh, I've got to question him in the Champions League, Sander, Brendan Rodgers, because uh, surely he's got to look at that and say, if I can see it and you can see it, and a lot of Celtic fans can see it, get the ball up the park, push it, and try and close them down in their half. You've got to try and play the game further up the park than defending, Sander. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I think he'll tweak it, John. I do think he'll tweak it. I don't know how he's going to tweak it, but I think he will. And you'll see a different Celtic Wednesday night. That's what I'm hoping for anyway, John. Aye, uh, but, but by the way, I'm not saying play the long ball out all the time. Let the keeper punt it out the park constantly. I'm talking about times when you're under pressure and you can feel the team getting trapped in their 18-yard line. See when that happens, Ander, and the keepers go it. 
and he's got the option to blow it up the park, pick it up and kick it out the park, just to relieve the pressure a bit, get it right up the park and try and play in their half. That's what I'm saying. Mm, yeah. All right, John. Okay. Uh, prediction. Prediction time for the lineup. Um, one to eleven starting. Eleven, John. Your prediction. What are you, what are you thinking? Um, so we're going. I think we're going by that. Trusty is going to be playing this one, aren't we? So, um, what's your predicted lineup? I don't think it's going to be much of a change from an Aberdeen game, is it? No, I don't think so. But uh, I, you're right about uh, Trusty. I think that's Cameron Carter Vickers has obviously been put in the stand on Saturday because he's not ready anywhere near ready to play for the first team so I think Trusty's going to start Schmeichel, Trusty, Scales Bally, Johnston Engels McGregor, Hitati Maeda, Kyogo and Kuhn mm-hmm. Aye Yeah that's it that's, that's, that's the team isn't it? That's, that's what I'm going to go with as well so yeah uh, good luck to the boys that's all we can say John isn't it? good luck because we're going to need it. It's going to be a uh, fiery atmosphere in that small stadium. It's going to be compact. You know, it's going to be like Tyne Castle or Pataudry, as you say, John. Um, they're going to be right on top of us, you know, but uh, we're going to need the luck, John. So, okay, John, that, that wraps up the, the preview. Um, it's, it's not, I can't say it's what I'm looking forward to. Let's put it that way. Uh, I never, I'm like you, John. I never really look forward to these games. But all we can do is wish the boys... All the best of luck. Remember, it's an early kickoff on Wednesday, folks. Um, just a wee quick prediction then, John, the scoreline before we move on. Oh, that's, that's, that's what I hope you've only gone to ask, Sander. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because I, ultimately, I fear for Celtic. With the past, the weekend's result especially, they just didn't look at the races. And I fear going into this game to be honest with you I do fear it but I'm never going to say a Celtic getting beat result so just for the sake of because it's Celtic I'm going to say one each yeah, I'm going two each I'm going for the draw as well it would be a fantastic result either way if we come out of there with a draw um, uh, fingers crossed that's all we can say fingers crossed folks because uh, a draw would be an amazing result um, with these remaining three home games still to come John so that puts on the board with four points with three home games still to come that would be quite an achievement actually oh that would be a brilliant achievement but everybody probably recognises my voice is filled with trepidation going into this game it really is um, but I I've says if Celtic turn up and do what Aberdeen did to Celtic who want a show for the, for, for the fans that show up uh, play for pride in the jersey. You've got to play for pride in that Celtic jersey. Celtic's a much bigger name than Atalanta when it comes to football. Uh, go there and play for the spirit of Glasgow Celtic. That's Celtic we're talking about. Go there and do your best for the name Celtic. That's what they've got to do. It's 11 men against 11. Your Glasgow Celtic, go and put a performance on for the fans. That's all we're saying. Yeah, that's it, John. Okay, all right, okay, we'll, we'll leave it there. Uh, by the way, folks, the comments will return on the post match. We're just running out of time today, but we'll, we've only got a wee quick half hour, 35 minute video here. So um, the comments will return on the next video, I promise you that. Anybody that's left a comment, don't worry, it will get read out, okay? Um, just a wee quick couple of fixtures, John, to look out for ones that if you're looking for a game to watch tonight, you've got Real Madrid, Borussia Dortmund. That looks like an exciting one, John. I'm not interested in watching any of that, Xander. I don't watch any of that stuff. I only watch Celtic and Scottish teams. But uh, it sounds like a good game, but it's, honestly, I'm no, I'm no interested in any of that stuff. Yeah, OK, we've got Juventus against Stuttgart, which is another one. I'll maybe keep an eye on that one. That looks like a good game. And then Wednesday night when Celtic play, we've also got the Celtic game. That's, that's the... <laughs> you know, what can you say about that, you know? We just hope it's a favourable result. That's all we can say. The Celtic makes surprise every one of us and go out there and turn Atalanta over. You never know. Uh, Barcelona against Bayern Munich, another massive game there, John. Another one I'm sort of uh, looking forward to. That's later on, 8 o'clock after the Celtic game. Um, anything else that stands out? Leipzig against Liverpool. Um, 
and the teams in our group, Young Boys against Inter Milan. So we're looking for a, a big Inter Milan win there. OK, John, that wraps it up. Thanks for coming on, buddy. All we can do is wish Celtic all the best. Ah, yeah, that's all we can do. Wish them all the best. Just go out there and perform to a man. Play to your capabilities. Put on a fight for the fans. Put on a show. And if they do that, you just never know your luck, Sander. It, it, it could happen. It's no impossible. Nothing's impossible. Um, I, I just, look, I, I would say I'm looking forward to the game, but I'd be lying because I dread every single away game in the Champions League for Celtic. Yeah, I'm the same. Yeah, I know. You know, you know the the results don't lie, do they? They don't lie. So, but my Celtic forever, John. We we follow them through thick and thin, win, lose, or draw, and uh, we've always been the same. So that's why we do this, isn't it? Uh, so good luck to the boys. Good luck to every one of the players and the manager on Wednesday night. Um, games on TNT Sports. Remember, folks, it's an early kickoff. It's a quarter to six kickoff. And um, John will catch you on the post match on uh, Wednesday. All right. Speak to you Wednesday, Sander. He'll heal me. Right, he'll heal John. Catch you later.